Okay, so welcome, um, Aubrey and Megan and Jacob. Um, thanks for coming on in. Um, today, what we're going to do, this is a kind of a big day. We're going to do chapters, uh, chapter nine, and that's hypothesis testing. And to let you know, we are spending the rest of the quarter doing hypothesis testing. So this is day one of hypothesis testing out of the whole quarter. So it's a big deal. So you really want to get it down if there's any things that you don't understand about hypothesis testing. And I'm going to go over some of it. It's a big topic. I don't have, you know, an hour isn't quite enough time to do all of hypothesis testing. So make sure you do look at the full length uh, video and make sure you read the chapter because it's pretty in depth. Even the video is much longer. So it's the longest video of the whole quarter for the full length. So just let you know, it is a tough one. And I want to get, make a few announcements. Um, the first one is the exam. So the exam is, must be taken by a uh, week from Wednesday. So that's coming up. Um, and I'm hoping by this Wednesday, everybody lets me know um, when you're taking it and where you're taking it. So contact information on your proctor. So Wednesday is your you know, best, that way you've done a whole week beforehand. I noticed that um, I already have one request to take it on this Thursday. That seems a little early. Um, I can do it, the test is written, I'm all ready. But um, again, if you take it this Thursday, it doesn't give you a lot of time to study because the test will covers up to chapter nine and nine is pretty heavily covered. So if you wait till Thursday, if you take it as early as Thursday, it doesn't give you a lot of days to practice chapter nine. So that's just a note. So again, let me know when you can take it and you can take it early as, as early as you want, but you know what you're getting into. And there's no retakes, by the way. Um, and the test will be a two hour test. So some people have been asking. It's a two hour test and that's the time you have. I make it that because a lot of practice charge per hour. If I make it longer, then you gotta pay more. And I don't wanna do that. If you take it here at LCCC, it's free, of course. There's no, but you need to make your uh, reservation ahead of time. So that's kind of what's coming up. Um, so expect, you know, a lot to do for practicing and studying. The other thing I want to recommend is really take last week's and this week's discussion post and, um, and reply very seriously because that's kind of what the test is going to look like. You know, there's a, a group of questions are going to look like that where you're going to do a lot of writing. So make sure you take those seriously. Um, I'll be grading those tomorrow, probably. Hopefully I'll finish by the end of the day tomorrow. And um, look at my comments on it and make sure you understand it. And for chapter seven, you know, and for chapter nine, make sure that to take that seriously also. It's your one time to practice doing the writing because the homework on the computer, they don't have writing, that's reading. So make sure you practice that writing. Any questions at all on that? Any questions? Okay, so I want to talk about uh, what we're going to do next, and that is hypothesis testing. So I'm going to do a little um, game. So do you, do you see what I have in my hand? Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Okay, so that's a quarter, fair quarter. And here's how the game is going to go. And I'm actually going to share my um, paint screen because we can do some writing. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the game. And here's how it works. It costs you a dollar to play each game. Got it? So if, if I um, flip a heads, then... I give you, you get a profit of a dollar, okay? So you get your dollar back plus one more dollar, got it? If I flip a tails, then you lose your dollar, I take your dollar. Does that sound like a fair game? Does that sound like a fair game? So put in your chat box if you think that sounds like a fair game. So if it's, if it's heads, you profit a dollar, if it's tails, you lose a dollar. Is that a fair game? I'm sorry. So I don't see, I'll put it in the chat box. Okay, it's interesting, I got a no and a yes. So Megan, why do you think it's not fair? 
You can talk if you want. I don't know. It just doesn't sound like very good odds because you're not really choosing what you get to bet on. Okay. Well, the odds, odds are. What's the probability? What's the probability of landing on heads? It's supposed to be easy. Another quick question. Fifty-fifty. Right, fifty percent. Right. Hopefully, you understand that. So there's a 50% chance of heads, 50% chance of tails. If you get heads, you win a dollar. If you get tails, you lose a dollar. Does that sound unfair? Right, so hopefully that's a fair game. You see that? Because you should break even. Do you agree? You know, give, in the long term, given the law of large numbers, you're, you should be breaking even because the expected value is exactly zero. And that's what you hope, that's fair. Fair for both of us. Okay, but there's a caveat. Caveat is I might cheat, okay? So you might be, you're a little suspicious that I may be cheating. I'm sitting here at my computer, you can't really see what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you suspect I might be a cheater, got it? So the first thing is let's come up with called the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is what the other person is kind of claiming. So the other person is in me in this case, and I'm claiming it's fair. Do you agree? That's what I'm claiming. If it's fair, then the probability of you winning is what? So what's the probability of you winning if it's fair? You can put it in the chat box if you want. What's the probability of you winning if it's if this is a, if I don't cheat? Yeah, 50-50 in particular. Remember, probabilities are numbers between zero and one. So first thing, we're gonna call this H naught. So it's an H with a zero. Second is chopped that in half. What's that? Okay, second is you got a 50% chance of winning, and that's a proportion. So the variable is gonna be P. P, P for probability of winning. And now it's gonna be 0.5. Any questions on that? Okay, and that's called the null hypothesis. Then there is what's called the alternative hypothesis. And most of the time you write that as an H with a subscript one. Some people use a subscript A instead. Our book uses one. Um, more people use one than A, but you'll see both. And then notice this is a colon, not an equal, by the way, after these H's. So H1 is what you're suspicious about. What are you suspicious about? Right? If I'm cheating, what does that tell you that your probability of winning is going to be? What do you think? Yeah, less than, and less than what number? Less than zero, definitely not. You won't have a less than zero probability of winning. Less than 0.5. Less than 0.5. So if I'm cheating, then your probability of winning is gonna be less than 0.5. Do you all agree? Any questions on that? Okay, that's called the alternative hypothesis. So now we've written down the null hypothesis and we've written down the alternative hypothesis. Now what we wanna do is we want to say, well, what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to run the experiment. Got it? And we're going to run the experiment a bunch of times. And then we're going to decide after running the experiment a bunch of times, you have to decide whether to accuse me of cheating. And I want to let you know, if you accuse me of cheating, you're going to have to go to my dean and formally make an accusation. You got it? 
If you don't accuse me of cheating, then you're not going to go to my dean and you're just going to keep playing. So let me define a couple things. So the first is a type one error. And that means that we ex reject the null hypothesis. But the null hypothesis is true. And that's called a type one error. So in this case, you're rejecting a, the null hypothesis. You're accepting P is less than 0.5. And then what are you going to do if you accept P is less than 0.5? What did I tell you you have to do? Any thoughts? See if you guys are listening. I don't see you all talking or putting in the chat box. So what are you going to do specifically? Any ideas? What do you mean specifically? So what are you going to do? So if you decide... Well, you reject, isn't it... Um... It is specifically, isn't it, or is it? Okay, so if you reject p equals 0.5, that means you accept that p is less than 0.5, and what action are you going to take? That's the question. So what action are you going to take at that point? Do you remember what I said? You're not going to shoot me. Yeah, you're going to have to go to the dean. Is that clear? Okay, but it says H naught was true. So you go to the dean and you tell the dean that I'm a cheater, I'm taking your money, it's not fair, and, but all along, I wasn't cheating. Do you see that? Because P was 0.5. Is that bad? What do you think? Any ideas? Are you following along? Hoping to have a conversation. <laughs> okay. Sorry, what were you saying that? <laughs> okay, so that's what I thought. So I want everyone to pay attention because this is important. If you miss this, you lose the whole thing, and you're going to be in, you're going to be really out of in in, in it, have some issues. Okay, so a type one error is you reject H not that H naught was true. Okay, so if we, you reject H naught, that means you decided that P was less than 0.5. And that meant that you went to the Dean, but H naught was true. So H naught was true means that the probability really was 0.5 and I wasn't cheating. So is that bad? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And who gets hurt? You. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're, you know, you definitely did something bad, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So that's called a type one error. Now there's a type two error. And that is kind of the opposite, except we don't say, um, we never accept H naught, we fail to reject. H naught, but H naught was false. Okay, so what, is, what does that mean? What's going to happen because of that? It means that your um, p value would be greater than the. Right, we'll get to the p value. Um, but what does it mean first to fail to reject H naught? What are you going to do if you fail to reject H naught? You didn't accept uh, the alternate hypothesis? Uh-huh. And physically, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the dean and complain. No, the opposite. Oh, you're not? You're not going to go to the, oh, because you were falsely accused. Right. You're not going to go to the dean. No, no, not you're falsely accused. You just failed to reject H naught. So you, right. did not, you decided that it might be true that the probability was 0.5. You see that? 
So you're going to keep playing. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. But in fact, H naught was false. H1 was true. So what's going to happen? If you you're keep gonna get cheated. You're going to lose, <laughs> lose money. Do you see that? Yeah. So a type two errors, we call these ramifications or repercussions or consequences as all mean basically the same thing. For a type two error, the ramifications is you lose money. You see that? Which is worse? The cheating or the type two. You think type two is worse? Yeah. Well, yeah. no. Because you can continue to, well, yeah. Yeah, type two I think is worse because you continue to play. So it's no big deal that you went and got me fired? When I well, the that's a big deal. But I mean, if you continue to play, you're still losing more money. You lose money, but so one, you lose money, the other, you get me fired. Yeah. Okay. So type two one would be worse. Okay. Yeah. I think type two is interesting. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me put it in a different perspective. Okay. It's something I'm doing possibly Monday. I may not have office hours Monday because why would I not teach or have office hours or do any of my normal things? It'd be hard. Huh? You'd lose your job. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't lose my job because I have jury duty. Okay. And that's a true story, by the way. I really do have jury duty on Monday. That sucks. No, this is very similar to you being on the jury. And you have to decide whether the defendant is guilty or not. So a type one error means that you reject H naught, but H naught was true. So that means you decided that the defendant was guilty. But in fact, what about the defendant? He was not guilty. He was not guilty. Is that good? That's bad. Or er, <laughs> It's bad. So what happens? The defendant goes to jail. Do you see that? Yeah. And what did the defendant do? The defendant did nothing. Do you see that? He's not guilty. Right. Now, what's a type 2 error? You say he's not guilty when he is. Right. And then what happens? The, uh, the criminal gets away with uh, being guilty, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's worse, by the way? That type two, right? Or I would say type one. Type, type one, too. Yeah, type one's bad. Okay, this is basically the same thing. <laughs> They're both bad. Type one is always going to be worse than type two? Huh? Um, sometimes if one's worse than the other. It depends. <laughs> it depends. But this is basically falsely accusing, right? Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. I go to jail, right? Because <laughs> I cheated you, I broke the law, and you accused me, it was all your fault, I'm in jail now, and I didn't do anything wrong. Do you see so that? So what happens, yeah, so what happens when the, um, like on the homework, it gives you three options to do reject, fail to reject, and accept. What does the accept mean? Ah, the accept is, the accept is, is a sucker move. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> never accept H not. Never. If you ever choose that one, it will always be wrong. Okay. <laughs> so we put that in there to let you know that can't ever be the right answer. Okay. Do you see that? You never accept H not, it turns out. Okay. So that's just something you need to believe. Just like you never prove somebody's innocent in a court of law. Do you realize that? Everyone's guilty? No, nope. you either guilty, you either decide right. you're guilty, or you didn't have enough evidence to show they're guilty. And that's how the court works. Um, in fact, the one time I was on the jury, the person might have been guilty, but there wasn't enough evidence and we actually were not able to find the person guilty. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't find the person innocent. Because you didn't have sufficient evidence to prove them guilty. Exactly, there were no witnesses. Do you see that? There wasn't enough evidence, which is not the same thing as saying they're innocent. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, so that's what hypothesis testing is all about. So now let's do it. You ready? Oh, wait, I need my calculator. Okay, you may not need your calculator right away. Oh, okay. Because we're, we're playing a little game. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play the game. And here's the rule. You have to play. 
But at any point in time, if you think I'm cheating, you can quit and then you're going to have to go to the dean. Got it? So you ready? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to keep track of what happened. Oh, before we do that, you have to decide on the level of significance. The level of significance is the probability of a type one error. So let me tell you how it works. It's a little like confidence intervals, except kind of backwards. The confidence intervals, 95% was like the classic confidence level. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And if you have a 95% confidence level, that's standard. If you're more worried about getting it wrong, then you choose like 99%. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, if you instead think the opposite way, so if there's a 95% chance of getting it right, there's a 5% chance of getting it wrong. Hopefully you all agree with that, right? Yeah. So with hypothesis testing, um, for some reason, we're more pessimistic. The number we cite is the chance of getting it wrong instead. So the, the standard is 5%. So what we do is we say the 5% is a chance of a type 1 error. And that's your standard. If the type 1 error is much worse, is really bad compared to a type 2 error, then you're going to go to like 0.01. Do you see that? If the type 2 error is much worse than the type 1 error, then you'll go to like 0.10. I'm sorry, say that part, last part again. If it's 0 0.10. So if the type 2 error is worse, Mm -hmm. then, you go to a, then you go to 10% instead of 5%. Okay. Because you, basically, if you make it 10%, you get a higher chance of a type 2 error, but a lower chance, I mean, sorry, if you make it 10%, you get a higher chance of a type 1 error, but a lower chance of a type 2 error. And the 0 .01? 0 .01 0 .01 would be a higher chance of a type 2 error, okay. but a lower chance of a type 1 error. Do you see they're opposites? Okay. Okay. A little like confidence interval and margin of error. Do you remember that? Yeah. You can't have both. Same thing with type 1 and type 2 error. The only way to make both small is large sample size. Okay, so I want you to pick, depending on which you think is worse, type 1 or type 2, if you think it's pretty similar, go for the 5%. Whether you want to do 5%, 1%, or 10%. Got it? And I'll give you two seconds to write that down in a piece of paper. Don't show it to me. Got it? Okay, so you should have it written down. So now we're going to play the game. You ready to play? So remember, heads, you win a dollar. Tails, you lose a dollar. Got it? So I'm going to flip the coin. And I just got a tails. You saw it, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to type in tails. Or T is good enough. Okay, so you have to decide whether it's time to quit or not. Okay, based on probabilities. So I'm going to do it again. So if you decide to quit, write down when you quit. Okay, so we just did number one. Number two. Heads. Okay, number three. Tails. Number four. Tails. All right, number five. Tails again. I'm getting lucky here. <laughs> okay, so again, if you decide you want to quit, you know what you have to do. You know the penalty for the, you know what you have to do to quit it means you have to accuse me of cheating formally, and otherwise you got to keep going. I got another tails. Okay, let's do another one. Hey, another tails. I think you're lying. <laughs> okay, just write it down when you you don't have to tell everyone else. Just write it down when you're ready to say I'm lying. Okay. <laughs> Another one. Hey, tails. And one more. Tails. 
Okay, are any of you still in? No. <laughs> okay, so now let's go through and look at these and decide whether you made the right choice. Okay, first thing, after the first coin toss, what's the probability that you would get one tail out of one tail, out of one flip? 50-50. 50%. Okay. Did anyone get out at that point? No. No. Okay. You shouldn't because 50% is bigger than 5% or 10% or 1% depending on what you chose. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope no one quit on the second one. At that point, you just won a buck, right? <laughs> You're even. If you thought I was cheating after being even, then you got issues. You agree? <laughs> Let's do the third one. What's the probability of at least two tails? 75 or 12. 12.5%. Okay. Did anyone leave at that point? I left on the second, or the tails after the 12.5. The next one. Okay. And what was your level of significance? Um, I did 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Okay. This probability, by the way, on the fourth one is 6.25%. You shouldn't have you should not have bailed yet because mm -hmm. you're, you're using 1%. Do you see that? You left too early. So would it be on like the fourth one then? Um, well, that was the fourth one, right? The fourth, no, the fourth tails, like down after tail. that. That one is 3.125%. No, the next one down. <laughs> That's the fifth tails. <laughs> yeah, the, well, Oh yeah, that okay. Tails. Is, I see it. I was going four down from heads. Ah, that one is one point five six two five. No, oh, okay. Percent. Do you think you should you have bailed? If you use point zero one, should you have bailed yet? No. Not yet. No way. <laughs> the probability is still too high. You see how that works? Oh, I see what you're saying now. Okay, get it. Right. These are the p values. Because it's a probability that something as rare as this could have happened. Do you see that? The next one was 0 0.7, I'm doing this in my head is not that easy, 78125%. So I didn't know that you wanted us to pick one for each, like the same p-value for every single time you flipped. No, not the p-value, the same level of significance. Yeah, the same level of significance. No, because that shouldn't change. Oh, okay. Because the severity of a type 1 and type 2 errors doesn't change while you're playing. You see that? Mm-hmm. You see how that works? Because you're either going to the dean or you're accusing me. I mean, sorry, or you're not going to the dean. You're either going to the dean and accusing me, or you're not going to the dean and losing money. So that doesn't change as you're playing. Do you see how that works? Mm -hmm. So really, if you use 0.01, you shouldn't have been, you shouldn't have left until after the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thoughts. Okay. See, I changed it like every time. So like on the third tails, I used 0.5. Uh, you should never change it. By the okay. Way. So that was my confusion. Where have you seen this? This thing, this um, process. The hint is eighth grade. Don't you hate that? Because I'm sure you remember everything you learned in eighth grade, right? <laughs> nope. It had a different name in eighth grade. Do you remember? Um, no. It had a name. You saw it in eighth grade science. Give me a hint. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you the name. It's called the scientific method. Oh. <laughs> Isn't you could have said you learn it in your biology class or your chemistry class. You do that too, but it's also in eighth grade. Every eighth grader learns it in the country, or at least the state. I don't know the rest of the country. But definitely every eighth grader in California learns the scientific method. Okay. And then you redo it more times. But eighth grade was the scientific when you probably first learned it. We but do that too often. What you don't learn is how to do the calculation for the scientific method. What you learn is you have a hypothesis, 
and you whether or not you're correct on your hypothesis or not yeah but you do an experiment right mm -hmm. and then based on the experiment you decided whether you have evidence to say you were correct do you see that and that's exactly what this is but this brings in probability to say what does it mean to have evidence so what you do is you have your level of significance and the what does it mean to have evidence means that this probability is lower than your level of and then we say we have evidence that something unusual just happened you see how that works mm -hmm. okay so you've seen this before not quite this way of talking about it but this is the scientific method this is all of research, whether you're doing science, or whether you're doing psychology, or whether you're doing business, this is how research works, is that you have an idea, you go out and test your idea, you come up with the chance that your idea is right, and if that chance the idea is wrong, that it just randomly happened, is so small that it's unbelievable, then you say your idea was right. And that is hypothesis testing. Any questions on this? Okay. I'm not going to go through every deal of every detail of hypothesis testing, but I did at first want to give you really the idea of what's happening. This is the idea of what's happening. Any questions on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and do an example. So let me grab one. I need to do a couple things. And I have to go to Not what I want. I can't get to it. Let's see if I can move it. Ah, there we go. Just need to move the taskbar. There we go. Now I can go to clipboard. And let's kill this example because I need the paint. Okay. There we go. Select. Sorry, take a moment. Better. Oops. Have to repaste this. So copy and paste. That's too small. Let's make it bigger. That's better. Okay, you should be able to see that now. Okay, so here's the question. The average American gets four hours of physical activity each week. A study was done to see if Tahoe residents are different from the rest of the US. Okay, what do you guys think? Um, yes and no. Okay, so we'll find out. Of course, I made these numbers up, but I actually know this from a different uh, study that was done but I simplified it with this study. Um, 45 tile residents surveyed, averaged 4.8 hours of physical activity each week, and had a standard deviation of 2.1 hours. So first, state the null and alternative hypotheses. So just to let you know, I think I'll do it in red. The null hypothesis, again, what letter do you always use for the null hypothesis? H-O. Yeah. So H not. And the British got to it first. That's why we use not. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's a, instead of H0, we say H0. H0, and then notice that this is not a yes or no question. Do you all agree? Mm hmm So we're going to use the letter mu instead of P in this case. So the letter of interest is mu because it's the population mean that we're interested in. Mu is equal to four. 
and then we have h1. That's usually a subscript, but it's hard to do on paint, so just h1. And that is going to be, again, mu. And then we're going to have a 4 here. And what inequality are we going to have for h1? The choices are less than be, um, n or not equal to. Not equal to. Yeah, what's the key word to show it's not equal to? Different. Yeah. So different. So the word different tells us it's a not equal to. So you can look for those keywords. Any questions on that? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, let me get some paper out. Because I gotta write this stuff down before I get my calculator. Actually, I can see it, I'm okay. Um, let me go to the calculator. Okay, so let me go find that. Uh, share. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stat, test. So I'm going to go to Z test, I'm sorry, T test. Okay, we don't know the population standard deviation, we almost never will. So T test is the right test. Enter. Do I have data or do I have stats? Stats. I have stats. I do not have a list of numbers that came from the survey. I only have the mean and standard deviation. The stats. So mu naught is four. So mu naught, by the way, is the mu from H naught. And then X bar was 4.8. Standard deviation was 2.1. And N was 45. Any questions so far? Okay, we have a not equal to, so I need to hit enter not equal to, and I really don't care about color. And I go to calculate. Okay, so a couple things. One is, what is the test statistic? It's a 2.5, right? 2.555. Yeah, the test statistic is a T. Oh, I thought you were asking like what it means. <laughs> yeah, no, what is it? It's 2.555, okay, or 2.6 is good enough. And what is the p-value? The p-value is 0 0.014. Good, good. Okay, so we have the test statistic and we have the p-value. So let's write this down. Let me go and unshare. Okay, so what we get is the test statistic, let's write it out, T was equal to about 2.6. And then our p-value was 0 0.014. Any questions on that so far? Okay, now we need to state the conclusion in the context of the study. All right, so notice, by the way, <laughs> 014, if it doesn't say what the level of significance is, what is the assumed level of significance? Remember what I told you? 0.5. Not 0.5, but... 5%? Yeah, 5%, 0.05. Oh, yeah, 0.05. Okay, so notice that the p-value is less than 0.05. So that tells us that we get to reject the null hypothesis. So that tells us there is statistically significant. Make this longer. Evidence to conclude that the population mean, and then it was. Um, hours of physical activity that 
that Tahoe residents get each week. Is not equal to four hours. Any questions on that? Any questions? So notice I pretty much restated H1. Mu not equal to four. That's the same thing as that. So a couple notes, and this is important, so take a note of this because you don't want to lose points on next week's test. So first thing is population mean. That must be in the statement. So if it's a quantitative question, you must include the word population mean. You remember to do that? Okay, and statistically significant. That when the p-value is less than the level of significance, you need to say statistically significant. Okay, and then you have to have stuff about Tahoe. Any questions about this example? So on the homework it says, um, it is significant and then it gives the population or sample mean. Mm -hmm. How do you determine if it's a, the sample? When you say it, what do you mean by it? Well, cause you put the, statist the statistical significance evidence is concluded that the population mean, well, what if the population mean really said sample mean? Then it'd be wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because when you're talking about the concluding conclusion, it's never about the sample. So the conclusion is always population. Yeah, sometimes it's population proportion. Okay. But it's never about the sample mean. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, it's never about the sample mean. We'll get to the sample mean next. But the conclusion is not about the sample mean. Okay. The conclusion is about the population mean. Here's one thing is that for the sample mean, you know what the sample mean is. Right? You are 100% certain the sample mean was exactly 4.8 hours. Right. You don't have evidence. You just know. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You don't need to do a hypothesis test for the sample mean. You know the sample mean. Is that clear? Yeah. So the population mean, you don't know. You only have your sample that helps you deduce what the population mean is. Does that help? Yeah but there still could be an error. So now let's look at um, part C, and that's interpret the p-value in the context of the study. Okay, so what that means is the p-value is the probability that if the null hypothesis it was correct, and you did a similar study, then you're gonna get something as, um, as, as unlikely as what you got extreme is what you got. So let me write down interpreting the p-value. So if the null hypothesis is correct, that means if, it's in red, if the population mean hours of a physical activity that Tahoe residents get is four hours. And if you um, surveyed another uh, 45 residents, 45 Tahoe residents, then there would be a, and the p-value was um, 0.014. So 1.4% chance, I turn that into percent because it makes it a little easier to talk about that way, that the sample mean for the new study would be at least 4.8 hours or less than 
3.2 hours. How did I get 3.2? Wasn't it given on your, oh wait, Never mind. I was going to say, wasn't that number given on your calculator, but I don't think it was. No, no I'm looking at my calculator. No, it doesn't have that number. Okay, so let me show you how you get 3.2. The, the null hypothesis was mu is 4. We ended up with 4.8. We got 0.8 higher than four. Do you see that? We have an H1 with a not equal to. Not equal to means it could be extreme on either side. So we got, so we got 0.8 different than four. Does that make sense? 0.8 different on the high side is 4.8. 0.8 different on the low side is 3.2 because four minus 0.8 is 3.2. So let me ask you any questions on that? Any questions? Sometimes it helps to draw a number line because it is a little bit weird looking. So right in the center should be four. What we got was 4.8. And notice that we're 0.8 higher than 4. Do you see that? So to be as a, at least that extreme, it could be extreme on either side because we have a not equal to. So that means the other side is 0.8 to the left. And that is 3.2. Any questions on that? So you just take the average given by Tahoe Americans and then you and then you give the average from the rest of the or the rest of the population and you just subtract the two and then whatever your difference is is what you subtract from the first right average. because it tells you that we're 0.8 different from four you see that okay. 0.8 different could be in either direction on the right it's easy because it's 4.8 on the left 0.8 less than four is 3.2 that make sense mm-hmm Okay, so that's um, part C. Part D, do we have to assume the distribution of physical activity times in the U.S. is normally distributed in order to trust these calculations? What do you think? The hint is look at the sample size. So the sample size is 45. Mm -hmm. And it's quantitative, that's important. No, it would be popular. There's a hint, 45 is greater than what important number? 30. 30. So 45 is greater than 30, what does that tell you? Do you need to make that assumption of normality? Yes. One more guess? No. No. The <laughs> assumption of normality is not necessary. Remember, assumptions are always bad. So if you have a large sample size, that's a good thing, right? That's the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is you don't have to assume because we're guaranteed it's normal. Okay, that's the same thing as the last chapter and the chapter before. This one keeps coming up. Any questions at all on this example? Any questions? Okay, just a note, if you want to interpret the level of significance, which we use 5%, by the way, mm -hmm. it starts out the same. If the population mean hours of physical activity that Tahoe residents get is four hours, and if you surveyed another 45 Tahoe residents. But then you would say there is a 5% chance that 
the new survey would end up having you conclude that Tahoe residents do get more than four hours when they don't, or get different from four hours when they don't. So that's a type one error. Hillary, I have a question for you. Sure. So the type of error is going to be determined. Are you going to put that on the um, on the midterm, or are you just going to have it like we're like supposed to determine, like is supposed to be greater than or less than the type error? I'm a little confused at what you're saying. So. Let me let me pull up the question. Um, so like on the homework, it gave you the um, 0 0.01 or 0 0.10 or 0 0.50. The level of significance. Yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna put that on the midterm? Uh, I'll give it to you on the midterm. Okay. I didn't give it on this example because I wanted you to know that 0.05 is standard. Okay. But on the midterm, I, I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, in the real world, use 0.05 unless someone tells you not to. So, um, are you going to write it out like the level of significance is going to be greater than or less than or equal to alpha? No, no, no. The level of significance is alpha. Oh, okay. That's, a, that's what alpha means. Alpha stands for level of significance. So, I'll write level of significance is 0.05. Okay. Or I'll write alpha is 0.05. I can write alpha is 0.05. Yeah, level of significance is the words for alpha. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just like the words for this H naught is null hypothesis. Okay. And the words for H1 is alternative hypothesis. No. Okay. Okay, so there's, a, there's some new symbols in this chapter. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Any other questions about this? This is an important little example. Just a note, by the way, um, when I was on the school board, we were, inter we were shown the statistics for child children, at least. And child children do have more physical activity than other children. And the p-value was ridiculously small, which is a good thing. So, children living in Tahoe get a lot of exercise. Not too surprising, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tahoe is an outdoor activity kind of place. But it's definitely true. It doesn't mean every child. This is a population mean for Tahoe. And that was definitely something that was conclusive. Any questions on this example? Any questions? Okay, so I wanted to I want to just kind of uh, kind of go over the ideas one more time. I don't know. I'm not going to do a whole nother example, but the idea is the first thing you do when you're approaching a question is decide whether it's a yes no question or is it a quantitative question. You get that wrong, the whole thing is going to blow up on you. Okay, it's usually pretty clear whether you want confidence intervals or whether you want a hypothesis test. Somewhere in the problem, it's going to talk about it. You're going to see something like determine a 95% confidence interval. Hopefully, you know that means confidence intervals. That's usually not a big problem. Hopefully, you agree with that. But I want to get you set for the test next week. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to say, well, what about, what do we ask for? Non alternative hypotheses are almost always going to be asked for. Um, the p-value and the conclusion are going to be almost always asked for. Interpreting the p-value or interpreting level of significance may or may not be asked for. Got it? But right. get used to writing. That's really important. Don't just assume I did all the writing, so I'm going to do all the writing for you. You're going to be by yourself on the test with a blank piece of paper, and you're going to have to write this out. So on the computer, of course, it doesn't read your writing and make sure your writing is right. It's not that smart. So practice doing the writing. Any questions on that? And notice the keywords. Okay? There's kind of a format on all of these. So start getting that format down. But practice, practice, practice. Any questions at all on the idea here? So one last little question. Now that we did the study, we've talked about type one and type two error. Only one of them is possible at this point. Which one is possible?
type one or type two error. You don't have to all talk at once, but maybe one of you can say. <laughs> or you could all talk. I'm looking really fast. Can you remember what type one and type two error were? So if we use the standard, it would be a type one error, right? That would be, which is possible. <clears throat> which is possible. Any ideas? All right, maybe I'll go over it. Okay, notice that we ended up rejecting the null hypothesis. Mm -hmm. There was evidence. A type one error means you reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is incorrect. A type two error means you failed to reject the null hypothesis. No, oh, but it was false. But the HO was false. Or the right. HO. We didn't fail to reject the null hypothesis. Do you see that? So that's no longer an issue. Do you agree? Yes. Because it didn't happen. We did not fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's not a possibility anymore. So only a type one error is possible here. Okay. Is it likely? And the answer is no. Why is the type one error not likely? Type two error is impossible, but why is the type one error unlikely? And here's a hint. No ideas? Did you say why the type one error is likely or is it likely? unlikely? It's unlikely. It's possible, but unlikely. Um, I underlined something really important. <laughs> is it because it's less than 0 0.05? Yeah, not just less than. See, if it was greater than, it would be impossible to type one error. Then we'd be talking about type two error. But it's much less than 0.05. It's not very close. 0 0.01 then, because it's type yeah. two and lower okay. than type one? Right. So it's, it's very unlikely because the p-value is so small. We not only have evidence, but our evidence is pretty strong. It's not ridiculously strong, but it's pretty strong. Do you see that? If this p-value had been 0 0.04, then the type 1 error is, is a little bit more likely. Do you see that? So let me put it a little differently. Um, and this is important for your projects, by the way. All right, let's suppose, let's, uh, let's suppose that the, we're going to do some scenarios. Let's suppose the p-value, uh, let's do it that way. Let's suppose the p-value instead was equal to 0 0.04. Do you think you should redo the study? What do you think? If you were, if you were the researcher, if you look at this and say it's time to redo the study, I'm unsatisfied. Which means a much larger sample size, by the way. If you do redo the study, you have to do a very large sample size. So it's a yes or no? You have a 50 50 chance if you don't know? Mm. No. <laughs> okay, and any thoughts? Okay, the idea is you shouldn't redo the study here. And I wanna, let, let me put it in kind of a different light. Imagine you're, um, you're playing a soccer game, got it? An important soccer game, okay? And you're ahead three to two, got it? Mm -hmm. In the last one second of the game, you kick a ball, okay? You're about to kick the ball, you know you're gonna score, and you get fouled but the referee doesn't say anything. And then the clock ends. Do you complain? No. Why not? Because you want the point. Huh? Because like you want that? the point. Right, you didn't get the point, right? Right. So do you complain? Well, I mean... Am you I got able... fouled, and the referee didn't call foul. Do you complain to the referee? But I mean, but if you fouled... 
No, you, you wouldn't got want fouled. that. You didn't foul. You got fouled. Oh, you got fouled. Okay. Yeah, someone slammed into you. <laughs> then, yeah, I would complain. Okay, the answer is you shouldn't complain. Well, I would complain. Wait, which because team are you on? Yeah. Team, you're winning three to two. Okay, then no, because you're already winning. Right, you're already winning. You're just a sore loser if you start complaining. You see that? Okay, when you have point oh four, you won. You didn't win by much, but you won. But you still won. You don't try to get a new study and try to make it even better because you won. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me change it. Same situation, but now the p-value is equal to 0 0.06. Do you think it's a good idea to do a new study with many more people, by the way, like 450 people instead of 45? Right, so in the first case, when it was 0.04, you don't do another study because you're very satisfied. How about now? Okay, maybe I should do the soccer example again. <laughs> okay, now, now you're losing three to two. And same idea, you're, you, you're about to kick the ball, you're gonna get the score. Someone slams into you, big foul, and the referee doesn't call it. Do so you, you would you would complain? Now you complain. Do you see that? So here, if p-value is 0.06, you weren't able to reject an null hypothesis. You can get what you want. Do you see that? Okay. So here, you're close. You didn't get it. Okay? You're still hopeful. Okay? You can't do 45 again. You actually have to do much more than 45. Because if you keep trying, you'll eventually get lucky, even if you're wrong. But you actually have to get bigger than 45, a lot bigger. Okay, any questions on that? What if the p-value was equal to 0 0.86? What do you think? Do you do another study? No. Why not? <clears throat> You do another study with a much bigger sample size. Hoping this time you're gonna get it. Okay, so let me give you the analogy again. Same soccer game. Now you're losing 10 to nothing. And you're about to kick into the goal. You know you're gonna score and you get fouled. Ref doesn't call it. Do you complain? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, because you lost. You're going to lose the game. Do you see that? If the p-value is 0.86, you give up. You never accept that you lost, actually. You just give up. <laughs> never, you, you, never, you never say mu is 4. You never accept H0. You just say, I don't have any evidence. Do you see that? Okay. So it doesn't really matter what number you're given. You still have to like, test your theory. When you say number, you mean the mu equals four? Well, yeah, because you have mu equals four, but then you have the p-value equaling 0 0.04 and then um, yeah. 0.86. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Right, so different p-values have different results, is what I'm trying to say. So what do you have to test it each time to make sure that your hypothesis was correct? Well, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just giving you three things that could happen. Oh, okay. You could either be close, you could either be under, you could be close but over, you could be far away and over. Okay. And those have three different actions, right? The first one, you brag. I got it, I won, I was right. Tahoe residents have more physical activity on average. You see? The second one, you complain, and the third one, you just give up. Yeah. The second one, you say, well, I didn't have the evidence, but I really think I want to do another study. It's worth spending a lot of extra time to get a big sample size. I think it was just my sample size was too small. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The third one, you just kind of hunker away. <laughs> you say, well, I'm not going to admit that the mean is four. I'm just going to say I don't know. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the typical thing you do. Sometimes with the 0.06, you'll even say, I have weak evidence. 
So you got to use the word weak. So even better is just do another big study. Any questions on this? It's a big topic. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> a lot involved, and there's even more. I, I'm not going through every detail because I try to restrict. I went a little longer than usual, but we also started a little later because there were some questions. So let me give you a secret word, which I didn't pre prepare ahead of time, so I better write it down. <laughs> and the secret word of the day is, how about in purple is done. Let me ask you something, because I don't see your screen. Can you see the whole screen? Um. Can you see the question and all the way down to secret word? Yeah. 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 OK. Again, I only see my side. I don't know what you're looking at. Oh, OK. OK. So if you're using a smaller screen, you may not be able to see it. So I mean, your home word. screen and, your, and the screen that you have up keep going back and forth. What screens? Your home screen, like your home page. And the paint page. The home page? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like glitching in a way. Oh, is it? I don't even see that. Yeah. I don't even know about a home page. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so secret word is reject. I have not set up the secret word quiz yet. Um, there is a second webinar. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a secret word for that yet because if you don't watch the review webinar for the midterm, you're just foolish, <laughs> right? At the, there, it's a high stakes exam. So you need to watch that webinar. Um, logging in live is best, but if you can't log in live, you better watch on YouTube. And which day are you gonna do this one? What's that? You're gonna do this tomorrow? Uh, Wednesday was the request. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is Halloween. I was going to say, I hope you don't do it tomorrow. I gotta no, take I it. wouldn't do that. I didn't even give that as a choice. Okay. If you remember last week when I posted, I wrote, don't pick Tuesday. Sure. Don't do it Tuesday, because that's not fair. But I said it could be Wednesday or Thursday, and people wanted Wednesday. So the Wednesday will be the um, review webinar. And unlike most weeks, this is one that you want to go to. You know, this isn't two of the same. These are very different. The review webinar is not going over hypothesis test questions. The review webinar is showing you how to study for the test, what to expect, um, what kind of questions you're going to see. Is your review webinar only going to be an hour or two or is it going to be a little bit longer? Um, it might be shorter. It might be longer. It depends how many questions there are. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if there's lots of questions, it'll be longer. If there's no questions, it'll be shorter. Um, it all depends on what you guys, you know, what you ask. But I'm gonna show you all kinds of resources and stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you the instructions, I'm gonna go through um, strategies and rules and all that, and content. Not teaching you content, but telling you what content's on it. Because okay. I have written the test already. And that's why I recommend, if you can, have some time in between the review webinar and study and when you take it. So that's why Thursday is not the best day to take it. I would wait. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week are best. If you have to, you have to. Okay, any questions before we call it a night? Are you gonna give partial credit for some questions? On the review webinar? I no, mean, on, the, the review, on the midterm. The midterm? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but only if you show work. Okay. If you don't show work, I can't give you partial credits. All you have is a number, and the number is not the right number. That's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see, but yeah, if you if you do what I just did, but you like wrote population proportion instead of population mean, where it's underlined, mm -hmm. um, you'll get partial credit. I'm not going to give you a zero on the whole problem because of that, but I'm not going to give you 100 percent either. I'll probably okay. get the point off for writing proportion instead of mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, how many questions are going to be on the midterm? Uh, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. Okay. All that, that's the Wednesday webinar. Yeah, so I'm going to go into the details on Wednesday. Okay. okay. The main thing now is get your proctor. And if, if you already have it, that's great. And, um, if you don't, that's not great. You need to get it. 
any questions, especially about hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing, this is on the test, by the way. Not this exact problem, but hypothesis testing is definitely on the test. Okay, so you know, I do actually have a question. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference when you use um, test Z and test T as opposed to prompt test? Prop? Uh, prop stands you know, for proportion. So that's for the yes or no survey question. Okay, and that's it. That's the only time that you ever use yeah. that is if it's a yes or no. And t-test is for quantitative. T-test. I mean, they're like half the time you do a t-test and half the time you do the, um, the one prop t-test. So it's not like, oh, you only do it then. That's like half the time. That's an important one. Okay. And then the z-test you only do... You should worry if using the z-test, by the way, on the midterm, <laughs> and even the homework. Okay. The z-test really is when you know the population standard deviation, uh -huh. and in reality, that never happens. Okay. Because how are you going to know the population standard deviation? Well, I mean, if it's given to you. Who's going to give it to you? Maybe you'll be nice and give it to us. It doesn't make it easier. I mean, you click the z or you click the t. That's not one time <laughs> In the real world, it never, it just doesn't happen. So why, you know, I don't need to teach that so much. Really, that's to remind you there's a normal distribution going on. And the T distribution is a um, adjustment to the normal distribution. Okay. On the discussion, do you want it to go like exactly the way you have it because you have a lot written on your discussion post. You want to write a lot, yeah. I think on my discussion post, I wrote it for like a few different examples. Oh, okay. You only have to do one example. Okay. I was like looking at your discussion post and I was like, oh my God, that's so long. Yeah, it was long, but that's because there were, there was more than, there were like three different ones. And I thought if I did it three times, it'll force you to read it three times and maybe you'll start remembering it. <laughs> okay. Um, but you should do you should talk about basically what I did here and the level of significance. Okay. Which I mentioned. Okay. Okay. Other questions? I'm good. Okay. If there's no questions, we'll say goodnight, but if there are, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see you Wednesday. Yeah. And know that we might get big snow next week, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> So if the school's closed, what are we going to do about our proctored test? Uh, if the school's closed, you'll see announcements on the canvas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get creative. It probably won't, but just be ready for, you know, driving slow. Okay. Okay. Have a good night. All right. You too. See ya. All right. Good night. Any questions, Megan? Hi. No, thank you. Okay. Then have a good night. You too. Okay. And for all of you who are watching this as an archive video on YouTube. Um, thanks for watching. Please post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have.